I'm James Ferguson. I teach in the anthropology department here. Uh, I'm chair of the department. I think there are a lot of people who should consider majoring in anthropology. It won't be right for everyone, but it's potentially a good fit for a much broader set of students than a lot of people realize, I think. Um, there's still this rather old-fashioned idea that if you study anthropology, you're study, studying some exotic, faraway place, uh, you know, on the other side of the world. And I'm not sure people realize the extent to which anthropology today is about understanding the contemporary global world in all its complexity. Um, it's a discipline that trains you to think about a culturally, a socially complex world. Um, it's a, it's a, a discipline that enables you to think about difference, about all the ways in which human beings differ from one another uh, and are the same, uh, all at the same time. And it provides you with a basic set of intellectual skills that are very wide applicability. Uh, so there are many people who will find that anthropological training is relevant who are not going to go on and become professional anthropologists, but who are going to find that in their various career paths, the ability to think well and in a sophisticated way about the culturally complex world we live in is an enormous asset. You find that in the medical world, you find that in the business world, you find that in law, you find that in public policy. Well, a lot of people don't know much about the field of anthropology. They may not even know there is a field of anthropology until they come to university. Uh, it's not one of the courses that you're taught in high school, typically. Uh, so people have to kind of first learn there is such a thing and then decide it's for them. Usually that happens when somebody takes um, a lower division entry level anthropology course. Um, so they might take the introduction to sociocultural anthropology or they might take the introduction to medical anthropology, especially home bio students are likely to be interested in that. Um, and that's the first exposure. Then maybe you take another course or two, you start to get the idea, maybe I want to major in this. Well, at that point, you pick a concentration. Um, we have four different un undergraduate concentrations. One is in something called culture and society. Second is in archaeology. Uh, the third is in um, environment, evolution, and ecology. And we have a new concentration now in medical anthropology as well. So you would then go on to take a focused series of courses um, in one of those concentrations, which would give a kind, of, uh, a kind of coherence to the undergraduate training. But you would also take courses in the broader field of anthropology. That's something you would work out with a faculty advisor. And as soon as you would become a major, you would be assigned a faculty advisor. We also have peer advisors who are wonderful, who really help you to find your way through the program. Um, once you've taken coursework, you may start to think about whether you want to do an, an honors thesis or a senior paper. Uh, typically, you'd be thinking about that in the junior year. Um, you can apply for the honors program, um, or even if you're not in the honors program, you can write a senior paper, which you do under the supervision of a faculty supervisor. That's something you would already start thinking about in the junior year. Um, if you were going to do a, a, uh, a research project, you would uh, get training already in the, in the fall of the junior year. Then you would do research typically over the summer. Um, and the department has funding for summer research projects, um, as well as university funding that's available for that. Um, and then having done the research, you come back in the fall, and we have a special course to help people uh, work on their research projects, write them up to produce the, uh, the honors paper or the senior paper. So that's the kind of capstone of the, of the major experience, is doing that, that independent research project and coming back and, and writing the paper. So one of the things you learn in the course of pursuing your degree in anthropology and especially doing the research projects is you kind of discover what you're interested in and you discover where you're where you want to head next. Um, for a lot of our graduates, for a lot of our uh, undergraduates, uh, like for a lot of undergraduates at Stanford in general, um, the BA isn't the end of the road. They'll go on to do graduate and professional degrees. Uh, and they often find that they're, that they're well prepared to do graduate and professional degrees in fields like law or medicine or business, um, public health, public policy. There's a gr quite a wide range of professions that, that follow naturally from anthropology degrees. Um, and these lead into some very interesting career directions. Um, We've had graduates, for instance, who ended up working on um, HIV issues and d d legal discrimination issues, uh, somebody working for the Department of Justice. We've had people working in social services who are interested in housing and applying their research skills and getting to know sort of grassroots level perspectives and applying them to housing policy. Um, we've had uh, one of our graduates a few years back ended up working for Intel um, and is now what they call director of user experience there. And you think, well, what is an anthropologist doing at Intel? Well, 
what they do at Intel is to f tell people how people use technology. And the people who are really good at designing circuit boards aren't really good at understanding how people use technology. So an anthropologist goes out there and says, well, you know, you have a model in mind of what your computer user is that's really a white middle class American. And let me tell you about the rest of the world and how people are using computers, and it's in some surprising ways. And you need to know that when you design the next generation of technology. Um, we have a lot of students who go into development work in the world of international development. Um, people working with NGOs, working on human rights issues um, is a common uh, career path, humanitarian uh, work. There's a lot of interest among anthropology students in engaging with the world and trying to improve it somehow, trying to make a difference in the world. Um, and the skills that we provide um, make it possible to take a number of pathways into different kinds of careers um, where, you, where you have a chance to do that. I think that's one of the things that's exciting. Anyone who wants to know more about the anthropology undergraduate major should come and talk to our undergraduate student services person here, our staff person, April Flores, who is fantastic. And we have peer advisors, so you can be advised about the major, not by walking into a professor's office, and, uh, which can be a little intimidating, but to sit down and talk with a, with a peer who's a fellow undergraduate who's taken a bunch of anthropology classes and probably a bunch of non-anthropology classes and who can really uh, talk in a way that's, that's often very helpful to students who are at the stage of kind of wondering about majors. We also have some undergraduate events um, where it's possible for students to come and have dinner and sort of uh, hear some faculty and hear some students and just be exposed to some perspectives on the major. So they should watch for those events as well.